Hey everyone, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. So last episode, we added a bunch of EV infrastructure here for things like the silicon wafers, the solidified gases, indium gallium phosphide, and even our new IV assembling machine here. We also made some progress through the micro miner missions and launched the tier three in the small microverse projector and got this medium one to launch tier fours. This now unlocks iridium and osmium, and of course, osmiridium along with that. But the plan for today is to build reactor number two. And we are going to be making over 10 times the RF per tick that we are with this 5x5x5. Five by five by five. So this is definitely not going to be a cheap reactor to build. In fact, you can see in front of me the number of coolers, cells, graphite blocks and casings that we need. The biggest concern I have actually is our tungsten supply. We're at 1700. I think the total number is 1900 that we need. Maybe 1800. I think it's about time that we add some more crafting CPUs from Applied Energistics to be able to handle all of these massive crafts that we'll be throwing at it soon. I added in a few of these 64k crafting CPUs, but I think we're out of red alloy for any more. I'll add some more throughout the episode though. Oh man, look at this. Just the casings on the outside of the reactor cost us 1500 tungsten. That's almost at all, um, but this is the bulk of the cost on the tungsten, so have at it Applied Energistics, do your thing. <laughs> There is also these 633 blocks of graphite. I did start processing this through ore processing between episodes, and I think we have enough. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, we're missing around 260 pieces of tungsten for the coolers. So in the meantime, I think we should look into this extended crafting that we got into briefly at the end of last episode. To craft almost all of the microminers, we do need some form of extended crafting, I think besides the tier ones. And Packaged Auto here is our solution to be able to automate these extended crafting tables. And the way that it's set up here means that we don't even need any filters to get this to work. All we need to do is set two recipe package holders. We select a table type and import the recipe. So those recipes were for the yellow table. We just need an unpackager above that. One of the recipe encoders goes here. And the other one goes in a packager. The packager can be really anywhere on your AE system. I've just put it above here just to keep them all grouped together. And I believe some more of these crafters have finished. Yeah. So what we can actually do here is parallelize this craft and have up to six around surrounding this unpackager. One on each side, we may end up putting one on the top as well. This really just increases the crafting speed when we request items from this thing. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. Applied Energistics will actually take care of the rest. So now if we wanted to, for example, craft two tier three microminers, tier threes are made in the blue table, so we should see them show up here in at least one of these things. Oh, actually, we're going to see the mining lasers in the, in the yellow tables. Yeah, there it is right there. Automatically inserts, outputs to the AE system, and any second now we should see our micro miner show up. Aha, there it is. <laughs> and this now effectively means that we can fully automate the recipe for the micro miner missions because of the way we have the logic set up here with the export buses on the microverse projectors. Also with the unlock of Osmium, it means that we can also start to send some of the alternate missions, the ones that required the gemstone sensor before. This we were gated by the IV sensor, which required an Osmium rod, which we should now have the ability to craft. We're going to start with this tier 3 one though, and we'll create a new blank piece of paper. This is going to be tier 3 micro minor exquisites. And I've set up the logic here again to be able to request the piece of paper for the tier 3 exquisite mission. We already have some of the tier 3s crafted, so let's send an exquisite mission. Did it work? Did I mess up any filters? No. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think there's a quest for this as well. Yeah, we need a gemstone sensor. And we should see a bunch of exquisites show up in our AE system. Awesome. So the exquisite emeralds we do need as part of crystal chips. The exquisite diamonds I believe we do also need for diamond lattice. Yeah, we don't want to be crushing these down yet. However, the exquisite rubies I don't think we need for anything else. We are going to filter these into a HV macerator just to pulverize them all down to ruby dust. Then we are going to electrolyze ruby dust and this can give us chrome. You may remember chrome has pops up quite a lot here and especially in the early game actually. And we'll need it soon for HSSG dust. So the chrome, we also get aluminium from this, we'll get its own drawer. We get also oxygen, which we are just going to trash in a fluid trash can below. And this will only run if we have over 256 ruby dust. Actually, let's make it 512. Let's go a bit more, a bit more safe. So yeah, that will be a passive way to create chrome. I think we've been low on chrome for quite a while, actually. And our stainless steel blast furnace hasn't been running for the longest time, I think. Thankfully, we built up enough buffer, though. Alright, so at this point it's really all about getting this reactor crafted. I noticed we were out of ender pearls actually, so I did add a few more enderman data models. But yeah, our main bottleneck here is basically just the tungsten. So now that we have access to osmium, I actually decided to invest in two IV electrolyzers for tungstate and shelite. Again, just to speed up the production of tungsten. Just to be sure though, I did actually shift the whole blast furnace for tungsten and put it over next to where we have osmium and iridium. That way we can actually run it all the way up to IV. 
And I think at this point we're bottlenecked by the amount of tungstate and shielite we can obtain, which is okay. I did also send a couple more tier 2 micro miners to get the ore itself, and added two more IV pulverizers onto our ore processing setup. I did a little bit of micromanaging with the ores at ore processing just to make sure we were processing the right things, such as salt, which allowed us to craft the 693 reactor cells that we needed. And finally, with enough tungsten, we can build our 60 coolers. Well, assuming I did not miss anything, I think we can build out our second reactor here. So I laid out the dimensions, this is going to be 11 by 9 by something. <laughs> we keep building until we run out of casings, basically. This reactor, though, is a little bit more complex than the first. Although it is still a recurring pattern, so once we get the first one nailed, I think we'll be okay. So yeah, we start with the coolers, and then we have some reactor cells in between. On the inside of the shell though, I think we have some graphite. I think it's alternating graphite, something like this. And then we also want our buffer- Oh, you know what? I forgot to craft the buffers. I guess we need 60 buffers, one for each cooler. And we're still short some thugs in. <laughs> Alright, this is the moment of truth. Time to see if we have excess casings. <laughs> Did we miss a block? So I switched to the copy paste gadget, but if we didn't copy the first area correctly, then uh, we're gonna have a problem here. <laughs> oh, I think we might, might have just made it. Yep, the last cell fits in the last slot. That's perfect. So yeah, still waiting on the buffers, but we can fill in the rest of the casings here. We just have to leave all of these slots next to the fluid coolers free. Oh, somehow we had extra casings here. I guess 750 was the wrong number, so if you're going to craft this, make a stack less. <laughs> oh, I was wondering why nothing would go into the drives. Look at this. We are completely capped here on our 4K storage cells that we haven't touched since, like, episode 4. I don't think I've made any since then. 2000 red alloy? I mean, sure. I think the drives filled up so quickly, even though we have drawers everywhere, it's just because of ore processing. Basically, all the outputs from ore processing just goes back to our main AE system. And a lot of the dust coming out of this thing don't have their own drawer in the base. But honestly, it's fine at this stage of the game. The storage cells are cheap enough. Alright, so it's been a while later. We've got around half of the buffers currently in place on the reactor. I think, again, we're going to use fluid lasers to distribute the gelid cryothium. And we need to specify the flow rate. This has to be out of adjacent blocks. This one is only into adjacent blocks. So this thing, as you've probably guessed, consumes way more gelid cryothium than the first one. So we're going to have to very, very closely monitor our, our fuel levels. Oh, this is going to look cool. <laughs> that is going to look... Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like that a lot. It kind of hides the fact that we have things sticking out of the reactor. All right, same on both sides, once all the buffers are crafted. Oh, yeah, I'm liking the look of this a lot. So I also got the redstone controls hooked up here. It's the exact same logic as the one on our initial reactor. Only I did add this extra timer here, and same on this other one. We got this timer here because I found that if the timing's lined up perfectly, it can actually have a redstone signal here and not actually turn on the reactor. So this just pulses it every 1500 ticks. And that usually is enough to reset this thing. And then it will read the reactor state again and keep it around half full. Although, as you can see, we're using most of the power we're making out of this original reactor. Oh, but we are- wait, how are we on 121,000 heat per tick? That doesn't seem right, hold on. Is it just because these things aren't full yet, or did we build this thing completely wrong? It has to fill, I think, 16 buckets on each cooler. Some of these are still completely empty, so I'm hoping that number is going to change for us. I'm really hoping that number changes. <laughs> Aha, these are the numbers we want to see here. So it's minus 65, 64 heat per tick, and this is 2.2 million RF per tick. Over 2.2 million. So because it's over 2.2 million, we need multiple connections on our signalum energy conduits. So I think we need at least five ports that these connect to. I also just made a backup, so um, here goes nothing. In fact, let's do this manually, just, <laughs> just so that we can immediately turn it off if things go south. Do you work? Oh my goodness, look at the power. <laughs> oh yeah, that is burning through fuel like crazy though. Yeah, that's exactly why we have this little circuit here in the front. It's going to try to keep it around half full with RF. Let's also just take note of how much TBU we have right now. I have a feeling our production here with the thermal centrifuges is not sufficient for this new reactor. However, I am going to switch off this old one. The fuel efficiency in this is only 576%. 
compared with our new reactor here, which is 1085.2% fuel efficiency. So we get way more RF per TBU pellet. Plus this thing makes like 10 times less the amount of RF and we still use a decent amount of cryothium. I don't want to take from this one basically. But yeah, the cryothium, that's the most important part that we have to watch out for here. Things seem to be stable enough, the buffers have filled up. And obviously the usage has went down now that all of these buffers in the reactor have filled. Yeah, it looks like it's about a quarter full. It must output a different redstone amount because it has a bigger internal buffer. But yeah, as for the fuel, we are just sending this to and from an interface. We have a storage bus on the TBU fuel on this drawer. So we can request it here, send it into the port, and the depleted fuel then goes back into the interface it came from. And that has a high priority storage bus on this drawer right here. We're up to 420 depleted TBU. And this we are ready to further process. But yeah, look at it off in the distance. <laughs> Oh, that looks so cool. So yeah, now that we have millions of RF at our fingertips, it's time for some overclocks. Starting with ore processing here, this, these ore washers are definitely all going to be taken up to IV. Same with these ones, the pulverizers all going to be IV. We're also going to overclock Signalum, this is only running at EV currently, and I noticed it was lagging behind a little bit our Lumium. Let's swap the EV hatch with an IV hatch. Same with Iridium, I think, this is also going to be IV. Let's see, is there anything else we want to overclock at this point? I don't think so, right? Oh yeah, these guys right here, these pulverizers making granite. May as well take these all the way up to IV and remove the sign. Can we wash your vacuum freezers in this? I'm curious. Oh yeah, apparently we can. Awesome. So we're going to add the second vacuum freezer here that I wanted to add. This is doing liquid air, I believe that it's called. Yeah, liquid air. This is going to be a little bit faster to process through our cryogenic air distillation tower, since this does have a little bit of downtime with just the one freezer. We just need to send this into the steel drum here. Oh yeah, it looks like the extract is quick enough with just the fluid conduits here as well, so... Yeah, let's continue on with a little bit more progression. We're in the late game chapter, and I want to use some of the exquisites that we picked up earlier on. And with specifically the emeralds, we have to send this through with some emerald plates and some helium. And with this we get engraved crystal chips which we can laser etch into crystal CPUs and this we can use for the final tier 5s, the third tier 6s and I think this tier 7? No, just the tier 5 and 6. Problem is to smelt the things in the blast furnace we do need the next tier of coil blocks, which in our case is HSSG over here in the quests. So the first thing that we need to make HSSG is tungsten steel dust. We only make the tungsten steel ingots so we do have to have a macerator of some sorts. Import tungsten ingots from our system here. Alright, that is going to get a drawer, and just to save buffer in three stacks of tungsten steel in here, we'll definitely level limit this to make sure we don't buffer too much tungsten steel dust. So that is one of four items that we need for HSSG. The other thing we need is chrome, which we've seen earlier. We should have some chrome left in our system. Nope, it's all gone. Maybe we, need, we have to send some more microminers. Let's set up the rest of this though. So we also need molybdenum and vanadium. So vanadium, we can get from vanadium magnetite. We get this from a, a ore from some sort of microminer, don't ask me which one. But this gives us magnetite dust and vanadium dust. There's no other use for vanadium magnetite dust, I don't think, so we can just, we're safe just to electrolyze all of this. The molybdenum dust we can get from processing shelite, so we have 11,000 molybdenum. I'm not worried about this at all, we're always going to be processing tungstate and shelite. Which means that so long as we have chrome, which we don't right now, we, <laughs> we should be able to make HSSG dust. In fact, let's just buy a bunch of ruby ore just to get this process going. Yeah, we'll buy like four stacks of ruby. It might not be such a bad idea to send some more tier 3 miners as well, since we do need some more exquisites for what we'll be doing next. So yeah, you know what, let's send four more exquisite missions for the tier 3. Easy, easy peasy at this point. And that should go through the electrolyzers that we set up earlier on. Although this crafter here is only going to make us HSSG dust, we need HSSG ingots. Which of course is a blast furnace recipe. Oh, look at the yield on chrome. Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> We get max chance outputs out of these things. Oh, that is awesome. We're going to be swimming in chrome. And you know what? Since actually we're making HSSG, we might as well make the other two variants, HSSS and HSSE. These ones should be relatively simple, actually. For HSSE, we need HSSG. <laughs> oh man, this is such a tongue twister. We need cobalt dust, manganese dust, which we also should have. These two we get from secondary outputs of ore processing. And finally, silicon dust, which we've had since MV. Awesome, so we're making HSSE. Let's make sure we limit this. Just the one stack, I think, will buffer of each. Downgrade the drawers. And this one will store HSSE. Everything is just extracted on blue and into the drawer controller. And the drawer controller, of course, has a storage bus in the back. So for HSSS, we also need HSSG. We need osmium dust, which is the reason we level limited to make sure that we kept osmium dust in our system. And we also need two iridium dust pair. This should be HSSS, perfect. 
all of these dust we'll need when we start the assembly line process, which I'm hoping should be either next episode or the one after that. We're really not too far away from the assembly line. But yeah, right now we need HSSG ingots for the blast furnace. So right now we can only add one of these HSS... HSS variants. <laughs> we can only add one of them because the HSS E and S require HSSG coils. So yeah, again, a very standard setup for us on the blast furnace. We only need the HSSG dust for this. We'll set the level emitter, I think, 1000 HSSG. Actually, let's go 1024, just to make it nice. All right, and we're off. Okay, this actually doesn't look too slow to me. I guess the recipe is stated here at MV. I suspect this will be fast enough for us at IV. Set the storage monitor. Assuming the vacuum freezer is fast enough, actually. But yeah, now we just have to wait for enough for a full set of coils, which is two stacks of ingots. In the meantime, we can pick up our next tier 6 circuit, which we crafted last episode. I think we just didn't hold the circuit itself. Oh, and the first tier 7s require the assembly line. Ah, all right then. Well, I guess we're, I guess we're waiting on HSSG. <laughs> what else can we do in the meantime? You know what? The answer to that is plan ahead. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> let's make some space here. Oh, that interface was named. I'm going to, we're going to have to rename that thing. Yeah, first of all, let's move this these two machines over to our IV line, where they belong. Okay, these should be operational again. So that makes space for, I think, another two blast furnaces that we need here. Yeah, so what we're going to be running in this first one is something called Niobium. Niobium dust. I think we get Niobium dust as part of ore processing. No, actually, we get it from the tier 2 micro miner directly. Yeah, we get one stack per micro miner here. So we have around 4,000 dust. That's actually a, a quite a bit more micro miner tier 2s than I thought we had already sent. Niobium ingots we're going to set at 512 to begin with. So the second blast furnace is going to be for Niobium titanium, which unsurprisingly just mixes both of these ingots together. Niobium titanium we are going to set, I think it's just 256. We don't need quite as much of this, but this we use to make fine wire, which we can do four at a time. And the fine wire is used in the next tier of circuits. We don't technically need this until post assembly line, but it's, it's good to have blast furnaces going early, as we know already. It looks like we've run out of tungstate and shellite to process. Let's make sure we keep this process going. We'll send 16 tier twos. We do this already? Yeah, awesome. Almost there, 123. And I also added two more blast furnaces here. Let me show you. So the first one, which we have on our HV line here in nichrome coils is just handling vanadium. That is then put into this other one here on the end. Uh, we, we ran out of space on that end. So this is down next to Lumium. And this guy is doing vanadium gallium ingots. So obviously we take the vanadium ingots, which we get out of that one over there. And this also requires gallium ingots. Gallium is only something that we're currently getting as dust. Let's add a furnace here. So a drawer with a downgrade on this guy should mean that we automatically have gallium ingots ready to be stocked. I believe these are also used in SMD capacitors as well. And by capacitors, I totally mean transistors. Oh yeah, and I also did add one more chemical reactor over here doing hydrogen. Just with methane water, we have lots and lots of methane from our distillation tower. The one that we had over here at MV was not quick. Wait, that's, that's not the right machine. <laughs> the one over here that we had at HV is not quick enough. I noticed that these electrolyzers doing tungstate were out of hydrogen. But yeah, this vanadium gallium on the end here, we can actually use to break into LUV. And the vanadium gallium is used for the cable. Oh yeah, we need lumium plates, which we're doing in the compactor. Let's give this guy an upgrade. Anyways, we should be able to get a quest with this LUV machine hull. And we've actually opened up the assembly line. Look at this. Is this something we can get today? I'm not sure. How expensive is this? Just some, some IV components and assembly machine casings. Oh, that is a lot of circuits and tungsten steel. Oh yeah, the tungsten steel. Tungsten. We have apparently zero tungsten steel. That's great. <laughs> well, we didn't get an assembly line today then. Oh look, the HSSG is done. We should be able to order our coil blocks. We need 16. You know what? I think we actually do need a second freezer. Now with all these blast furnaces running. Yeah, that's better. There's our quest for HSSG. Let's add our first IV blast furnace here. This, on the other hand, is a pretty horrible looking coil. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. The tungsten steel is so much better than these things. Oh, that's right. We do also need a fluid input hatch for this one with a fluid interface on top for helium. I filtered in exquisite emeralds in here. So the other thing we need is emerald plates. Yeah, emerald plates, exquisite emeralds and helium. Emerald plates is not something that we are currently producing anywhere. Let's make use of some of these HV compressors that we made last episode, briefly. <laughs> these things have seen very brief use. But here we can filter them for emerald plates, give them a drawer with a downgrade. And this means we have our second item here available for the blast furnace. Let's maybe change this out for an LV input bus so that we can input two items. And we want limited item filler instead. Aha, there we go. Wow, this is actually really quick at IV. 
Yeah, so this gives us engraved crystal chips and a request. And I don't think there's any use for them, for these things, right? Other than to laser engrave them. Yeah, when this happens and there's like literally no other use, there's no point in buffering them as the crystal chips. We may as well send them directly into an IV laser engraver, assuming we can actually make this thing. We are one tungsten steel short <laughs> and the emitter short. This we're going to put on our IV line here, input from output side. And I'm sure there is a way to automatically pull and also export to the same side using the robot arm. I think we want manual IO on unfiltered and then set to import. Green lens inside. Aha, it does work. It does work. Okay, so all of those should be in our system. That gives us a request. We can set the level limiter. Here we'll start again at 512. Ah, these are used one at a time for four circuits. Maybe we set a bit higher than that. Let's go 1024. It's not like we're going to have that many exquisites in the first place anyway. Actually, you know what, on second thought, just to be a bit more safe, I'm going to level limit based on these engraved crystal chips. Just for whatever reason, if that laser engraver ends up out. I mean, not that it really matters, that's unli very unlikely to happen, but I think we'll do it this way instead. But yeah, this leads us into the fourth and final tier fives, which we need the assembly line for. And well, you've seen our state of tungsten steel, so that's not going to happen today. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Thinking about this some more, we don't have any way to hard cap crystal chips. And we do use emerald plates for something else. And also helium. I don't want this to use all of our helium. So we're going to use a drawer to control exactly how many of these things we make. Yeah, I think this is the best way. We'll put a storage bus in the drawer and some storage upgrades. So that's like eight stacks. Anyways, I think this is a good point to wrap up this episode. I haven't had any problems here with our reactor yet. I was keeping an eye on our TBU levels and I think they've went down, right? We were at 1209 earlier in the episode. And we're now at 1157, so I think we'll have to do something about these MV centrifuges. Cryothium seems to be good though, which is the main concern in this. Our coolant seems to be sufficient. I think we're keeping up here with redstone, blizz powder, and snowballs. Anyways, yeah, that is going to do us for today. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.